today by Sikam Lo Sitor, harboring ill feeling and taking revenge. Yeah. We left off Ein Gimel. Misil Sisharim, page, page 73. One's inclination, the Yetzer goes and causes a person to be, he says, inflames, inflames the person. Umavakish Tomid Loniach Lafochos is a Roshim or is a Zikorim in Adover. And the Yetzer wants to leave minimally some trace or some memory of what happened, of the previous event. You ask the man to do you a favor, he turns you down. And you feel denied, because he should have, for whatever reason. Even if the Yitzhak is not able that the, the, the memory, the impression should be to a greater degree, to a lesser degree. This is what the Yitzhak whispers in one's ear. If this person wants something from you which he wouldn't do for you when you asked him, when you were in need, but minimally, you should give it to him. Normally, you would, you would, you would give somebody, someone, you give it, give it with a positive feeling, with a happy kind countenance. Show, it, show him that you're giving it begrudgingly to him. You don't give it with the same uh, facial feature of joy. And if you don't want to turn him down, to deny him, do, do a lesser favor rather than a greater favor. He needs, you, normally you would have given him more money, you can give him less money. Normally you would have given to him in the most welcome way, you're not giving to him, you're not welcoming him. You feel burdened. And even if you want to help him to a greater degree, do it in a way that he's not aware that you're helping him. Not because you, it's, it's not because you're a tzaddik. The friendship will never be the, the same because the person doesn't want. That's an indication he's harboring. If you forgave him, you should not appear that you're his enemy. This is what the Yitzhar whispers in the person's ear. Show him that you're not happy with him because of the past that he didn't treat you as. He, you should have been treated. This is, this is all revenge. It's in the Kima and the Tira. Harboring your feeling and when it manifests itself in an action where it's displayed, that's the Kima, the Koma. The Chavetz Chaim in Torah Chesed speaks about this about lending less money where you normally would have lent more money. A uh, happy countenance and you give it with, that you feel, you show the man that you feel uh, you put upon. And even if you want to have a relationship, association with him, don't show and display a great degree of love as normally you would have. He says, all such ex as expressions of diligence part of the evil inclination. <laughs> he attempts to seduce the hearts, the feelings of a person. <laughs> Therefore, the Torah puts down a principle. <laughs> love your fellows as you love yourself. Factually, if you, mo if you forgave him, and if he did nothing wrong, he did, he's not considered a Rosha, you must love your fellows as you love yourself. Belishum <laughs> hefresh. There should be no difference in yourself and him. Kamocha b'li chidukim. B'li tachbul zimos. Without any ruse or devices. Literally, kamocha mamosh. That's the degree of ava'ava of feeling you should have towards him. Not simple. Let's say you had a friend. He betrayed you. A true betrayal. He came and he asked forgiveness. He truly. And you forgive him. And you do forgive him. It'll take years for that relationship to be mended because the man has to prove himself endless times over and you, can't, you don't have to have positive feeling towards him. 
even though he's proven it. He's proven it. He hasn't proven it enough. It's not so simple. It may be considered uh, Lusitor. You're harboring ill feeling, which th- there is no reason to harbor it any longer. Because he has proven himself sufficient. Well, I want him to prove it to a greater degree. Just because that's what you want. But still, Baf Lerechel Kamocha. No, if he did the wrong thing, the Iran, until he has forgiveness, you don't have to forgive him. We're talking about it here. You asked him to do you a favor. He's not a tzaddik, but he's not a Russia. Right? The Chofetz Chaim speaks about this. Even if a person violates the mitzvah, it says, um, it says, in Kesef Talve Ami, you're supposed to lend your fellow money. And you're able to, he turns to the ideas and won't lend you. He did the wrong thing, but he's not a Russia. He's not a Russia. And if he's not a Russia, you have no right to hate him. Right? Are you happy with him? You're not happy. Now, and now he comes when you, he's in need and he asks you for a loan. Do you lend him the money? And he's good for the money. It's not a question you're, you're, you're putting yourself in a, you're je- uh, putting yourself in, in jeopardy. Give you collateral, everything else. You'll have every reason not to lend him the money. But to put him off and let him understand it's not so simple. And if somebody wants to ask me a question, a child goes to school, you know, and your child's giving, and other kids aren't as giving as your child. So you say to your child, you, know, you behave the way the others. They don't do for you, you don't do for them. Right? How often does a parent say to the child, just to teach him how to deal with his, with, with his, with his uh, peers in school, or many things. You know, you can't uh, allow yourself to be abused. And therefore, you have, to say, you have to say no very often. Even though you could, don't say yes. And they don't do, so why should you do? I mean, but it's, it's, a, it's a wrong chinuch. I mean, you have to you have to be very. It's a very delicate balance, right? How you should how should you should educate a, a child? What's right and what's wrong? No, you get your pound of flesh, right? That that you don't. Of course, that's, that's no question. That that's revenge. But you see, revenge is much more. It, it's much more uh, delicate than that. Turning a person down, not doing a favor because he didn't do you a favor. That's revenge. It's not avenging. It's not avenging. This is called revenge. Somebody told me a story many years ago. Um, it was in Israel. A certain person was dishonest. Dishonest person. And years ago in Israel, I don't know about today, anything that was for export, the government would give the exporter a certain amount of money, percentage of the value of what he exported, to encourage export from Israel. And this person, he, he, you know, he falsified the books, he never exported, and he was collecting money from the government. That's the type of person he was, and, um, and but he was a person who was, was, was really dishonest. He'd borrow money for he wouldn't pay, different things. His business practices were, 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 were disgraceful. And eventually he was r- arrested. And this person had borrowed money from Rav Shlom Zalman Orbach and Rav, Sh- from Sh- Rav Shlom Sh- Shvadron. And he had never paid back the loan that he borrowed from him. The money he borrowed from Shlom Zalman Orbach and Rav Shadron was his brother-in-law. Shlom Shvadron and Shlom Zalman, they were brothers-in-law. And, okay, this person who's related to me had a coal oil in, in, in he, he funded a coal oil in, uh, in Israel then. This is in the uh, early 70s. And Rav Shlom Shvadron's son was the Rosh coal oil. This other person funded the coal oil. And he heard that after the man was arrested, he had sent a message to, to Rav Shlom Zalman and they should put up the bail money for him to get out. Here. He borrowed, he was arrested because he was dishonest. He borrowed money, he never paid the loan to Rav Shlom Zalman or Rav Shlom Shadron, to Tzadikim. And now that he's arrested, he's asking them to put up the bail money to get him out of jail. When this person heard about it, he was an, he's an American person. He was infuriated. <laughs> man has such a chutzpah. I mean, after his behavior, and he even victimized these tzaddik, he should go to them, they should put up the bail money to get him out of jail. So he went to them and says, you can't do it. He had a relationship, he says, you can't do it. The man, the man deserves to sit, sit behind bars. So he says to me, what do you think they did? Put up the money. They put up the money. To t- they made, that was their cheshman, whatever it was. You could say, he's a Russia, he's this, you know, there's no mitzvah after Rechel Kamocha. For whatever reason, they put up the bail money. 
look, if he were to come out and victimize others, I mean, so, you, you know, it's a menace to society. You keep them in behind bars. It's evidently based on their evaluation. He wasn't a menace to society. But they put up the money. So I'm just showing you. I mean, after being hurt and victimized to such a degree, how, how could you even have any, any, any feeling or consideration of such a person? I'm sure you're showing you up there. It's a special level. So ideal, right? Is that something we're supposed to try to achieve? I mean, there are people that get arrested every day, and who sometimes, you know, they've actually committed real crimes. Is, is are we are we should we try to achieve the level where, regardless of what their crime was, where no, no, you, you, have, to, you have to seek out that story. These people have told themselves that they can make that decision themselves. You're not in a position to make this evaluation. You know, we we should put you your money. You know, the better place is to put your money than take pe put a bail for people in jail. People right, have don't have food on the table. What? Is something we're supposed to try to achieve? But we just no, just giving this as an example that, in terms of emotionally, you should f because you were victimized. How could you even even consider helping such a person? And they did. That, that's, I'm just bringing that example. I'm not saying you should learn from that. How you should that you'll do the same. I'm not, not saying that. So I, that's, I'm not getting details. I'm not sure what the details, why they did it. That's what he said. If he was still the bad person, so on and so forth, whatever it was, I don't know. But they felt, but you say, but despite whatever happened, still they were victims. To go back, the chutzpah and everything else, and the money was still owed to them. So he said, maybe they, they, they waived the money. They forgave the, the loan. Maybe. Right, you could forgive a loan. Well, we learned from my rabbis for about selling more camp, so how does that figure into this? The person still looks buff. He has to behave like Reyecho. He has to behave like, like a proper Jew. If he doesn't behave like a proper Jew, there's no mitzvah to Reyecho Kamocha. It doesn't make a difference. But the Torah dictates when yes and when not. The Torah is dictating that. I tell you, politicians have no problem. One day, the way they talk about one another, Arch enemies beyond arch enemies. Next day, they're embracing one another. When he takes them at his running mate afterwards. What happened? I'm just showing you. This is the level of integrity these people have. And emotionally, I don't know where they're at. It's as if they have no emotion. I mean, after what you said about me, can I even look at you? And pe people, even business, you find people, certain businessmen. I mean, literally, cutthroat. And yet, once it passes, the deal is over, Onto a new thing, they're in, they're in the deal together. It's, you know, you'd say, w w what, what's the level of, of integrity these people? They have no integrity. You know, it's the moment, once the moment passes, as if the, the previous moment didn't exist. To be continued. Well, that's understandable on another level. Politics, they say, makes strange bedfellows. Okay. Uh, it's all about self interest. Ephraim, the Mark Subis again? The Mark yeah. Subis. Thank you. It's not a lie what people what a person says about you. 